Welcome inside the State Champs Sports Network Studios for another edition of State Champs at the State Finals. I'm Sarah Davis and this program is presented by Lawrence Technological University. The Blue Devils want you to recruit yourself. Go to ltuathletics.com. This has been a year going on two years of stop and go. But folks, we're here and the Michigan boys swimming season has completed. Let's get into it. This is the 2021 MHSAA Team Swimming State Finals. A season filled with change, uncertainty, and many transformation ended with a positive result at the boys' 2021 Michigan State Finals meet. The athletes and coaches were unsure how the season would start and finish, but were amazed at the positive outcome they received. Let's get into the action. And we begin with Division I out of Hudsonville High School. Celine would begin the meet dominating in the 200-yard medley relay. They came close to setting a new Division I record in the race. The senior anchor, Ethan Saunders, finished the race with a time of 1 minute 30 seconds, 0.35. Over to the 200-yard freestyle. It was a battle to the end between Matthew Siegel of Ann Arbor Pioneer and Connor Halberg from Northville. But the University of Wisconsin-Madison commit would win the race by tenths of a second. Moving right along, another Ann Arbor Pioneer swimmer, Ryan Hume, would dominate the 200-yard IM race, winning the event by two seconds. Next to the exciting 50-yard freestyle, Holland West Ottawa High School would grab hold of the victory. The junior Kevin Moss would edge out Dane Herrick of Lake Orion to claim the victory. Let's go to diving. This would be another victory for Ann Arbor Pioneer. This time, Cole Tremont from Pioneer taking top honors with 449 points. And we go back to the race. This would be a battle right to the very end. Fletcher Smith, a junior from Huron Valley United, just beats out Nolan Grensons from Detroit Catholic Central for the win. Ethan Saunders would take home first place in his second event of the evening. After finishing on top in the relay, he pulled through and won the 100-yard freestyle too. Saunders is ranked eighth in the state of Michigan and will continue his career at Xavier University. Moving right along into the 500-yard freestyle, Connor Halberg from Northville was in battle with Ryan Hume of Ann Arbor Pioneer. And Halberg will touch the wall for the win. Halberg will continue his career at Hope College in the fall. Changing gears over to the 200 free relay. The group from Holland West Ottawa High School would set a new Division I record in this race with a time of 1 minute 23 seconds, 0.25. The junior Kevin Moss would anchor the last leg for the record-setting victory. The Panthers as a team would finish the runner-up. In the boys' 100-yard backstroke, the junior Jack Van Howe from Rochester High School claimed first place after finishing with a time of 49 seconds, 0.35. But Celine High School would answer back in the boys' 400-yard freestyle relay. Matt Anadin finishing off for the Hornets with a time of 3 minutes, 3 seconds, 0.35. Four. Celine as a team finished in third place. But this day would belong to Ann Arbor Pioneer. In the 100-yard breaststroke, the senior Siegel would finish with a race time of 53.26, beating the competition by a whole two seconds. Your 2021 Boys Swimming State Finals champion would be Ann Arbor Pioneer. This is the Pioneer's first state title since 2009. It's, it means so much. I mean, we're all really excited. Uh, it's been a long time in the making. We have an amazing team this year. I'm so thankful to be a part of it. You know, it's, it's, um, it's a great uh, kind of culmination of a, of a tough year and um, something that we try to um, be real consistent from start to finish. And, and I think the boys really kind of put their stamp on it today. They've sacrificed so much and, and given up a lot and um, you know been bugged by all the coaches to you know stay apart and and not do all the fun things that comes along with with this and um, they've just been troopers and, and done such a great job from start to finish 
If you're a high school athlete with the dream of playing college sports, Lawrence Technological University wants you to recruit yourself. LTU offers over two dozen varsity sports for men and women, along with several dozen world-class undergraduate programs. Athletic and academic scholarships are available in all sports, including its newest additions, competitive cheer and dance, e-sports, women's hockey, and men's and women's track and field. Visit LTUathletics.com and recruit yourself. Lawrence Tech, where Blue Devils dare. I'm Mike Derlaitis, Jenison High School, the site for the MHSAA Division II Boys Swimming and Diving State Finals. We get it started with the 200 free. Clayton Kennard from Dexter in lane six, keeping his lead over the field as he takes top honors. On to the 200 individual medley. It was Berkeley's Jack Hamilton in lane five, taking gold in the IM. Up next, for the first time in history at the state finals, we have the Para 50-yard freestyle. Competing for his team, junior Joey Gallagher of Birmingham Groves. Joey is the first Para athlete to compete in the state finals, but he's not finished there. After his high school career, he will be setting his sights on qualifying and competing in the 2023 Special Olympic Games in Germany. We stay in the 50 free. Take a look at the bottom of your screen in lane eight. Charlie Bruce of U of D edging out the competition. Check out that reaction from Bruce. That is what the state finals are all about as he takes first. In the 100 butterfly, we had a tight one to the finish, but it was Avery Letourneau of Grand Rapids Forest Hills Central in lane four earning the gold. On to the 100 free. Again, it's lane four, but this time it's Farmington's Trevor Jones taking the top billing. Up next, the longest individual race of the day, the 500 free. The top ranked swimmer, Gianni Carlino of Gross Point North trailed for most of the race, but turned it on at the end as he just beats out Battle Creek Lake Views, Aiden Bolt. We head to the 100 backstroke. Another tight one as lane threes, Drew Collins of U of D Jesuit holds off the rest of the pack for the win. Photo finish in the 100 breaststroke. Check out lane four, Byron Center's Michael Grover as he edges it out in the closing seconds for the victory. Up next, one of the favorites for a lot of the teams, the 400 free relay. The team from Farmington, Jared Visser, Andrew Pan, Raj Sibby, and the anchor here, Trevor Jones, getting it done and taking the gold. In the 200 yard medley relay, it was an impressive and dominating performance by the U of D Jesuit team of Drew Collins, Andres Borrego, Charlie Bruce, and Christian Bouchelon. This finish helped the Cubs take third place overall in the team standings. On to our last and closest race of the day, the 200 freestyle relay. In lane four, Gross Point South's anchor Tucker Briggs gets the win for his team, also consisting of Kieran Rahman, Drew Vandeput, and Ryan English, as the Blue Devils of South take second overall. Last, but not least, we take you to diving, where Cam Lieberman of Seaholm would take the gold. That would also help in the team standings as the Maples of Birmingham Seaholm are your 2021 team state champions. Yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely when you have a target on your back, that can be hard to handle. We definitely had that target on our back. And you know, I think the nerves got to us a little bit early, but our team recovered and we just kept on a roll, kind of like a freight train, building up steam to the very end of the meet and uh, we were able to pull it off. You know, I, I think really it's just been the same as any other season. I mean, I know this was probably the best group of guys we had, but you know, any, any given meet, any team can win. 
So we just try to come out here and do the best job we can and just let the results happen. Yeah, we were lucky enough to have a quad meet against some of the faster teams here. And based on the results of that, I came into this with a decent amount of confidence that we'd come out with the trophy. Did you record an unbelievable touchdown, a game-winning goal, or just a proud parent moment? Then we want your clip. Upload your video to the brand new State Champs Network app so we can feature it on one of our shows and give your player, team, and school the recognition they deserve. All it takes is just a few easy clicks, and every clip that is submitted will automatically be eligible for prizes. Download the State Champs Network app today for iPhone and Android devices. Let's finish out our state finals coverage with Division Three out in Holland, starting in the 200-yard medley relay. Battle Creek, Harper Creek started the race off strong. Senior Andrew Zhang would finish it off for the Beavers with a time of 1 minute 34 seconds, 0.97. Next to the 200-yard free, the senior Spencer Bollinghamer from Trenton High School would edge out Joey Grassman from Holland Christian by 0 0.20 tenths of a second, ending his senior year on a high note. Milan High School found their way on top in the boys' 200-yard IM. Ranked first in the state of Michigan, the junior Andrew Dorbinski took home the gold with a finals time of 1 minute 50 seconds, 0 .07, winning the event by 3 seconds. Moving along to the 50 free, Jacob Ryan, a senior from Detroit Country Day, who's committed to Virginia Tech, battled it out with Charles Brown of Spring Lake. And it would be Ryan pulling it out for the victory by 0 .20 tenths of a second. Brown would be in another battle in the 100 butterfly against Pinckney Jr. Tyler Ray. And in the close battle, Ray gets the W with a time of 49.23. The 17th ranked 100 yard free swimmer, Colin Kalkman from Holland Christian High School would battle until the finish in this event. Going head to head against Jacob Ryan from Country Day but would pull ahead and claim the victory with a finals time of 45.72. Mason High School would get their name on the leaderboard in the 500 yard free. Jonas Cantrell, a senior, would blow his competition out of the water finishing the race with a time of 4 minutes, 27 seconds, 0.58. Winning by 8 seconds, Contrell will continue his career at Oakland University upon graduation. In the 200-yard free relay, it was a battle between the anchors Jonas Cantrell of Mason and Logan McCahill from East Grand Rapids. It would be Cantrell for the Bulldogs stealing this one with a time of 1 minute, 26 seconds, 0.52. Next up, another battle in the 100 backstroke. Holland Christian senior Colin Kaufman would be your champion as he beats out Tyler Ray of Pinkney by tenths of a second. In the boys' 100-yard breaststroke, Andrew Durbinski from Milan High School would claim his title in this race, finishing with a time of 54.67, winning by half a second. Another relay. Holland Christian, Colin Kaufman would fight to the finish to win this relay finishing with a time of 3 minutes, 9 seconds, 0.58, beating out Charles Brown of Spring Lake by 0.15 tenths of a second. Holland Christian would be your Division Three runners-up. This day would belong to East Grand Rapids. In the boys' one-meter dive, the junior from East Grand Rapids, Charlie Bayer would claim the victory as he finished with a total of 490.75. East Grand Rapids is the 2021 Boys Division III State Finals Champions. This is their first state title since 2013. Well, it's a strange year, plus we're very excited that we got to swim this year because, you know, everybody missed last year. So this is kind of one we fun to make sure we got, and these kids got fired up for it all year. Yeah, we definitely came out of last season a little bit disappointed. We were ready, we were on the bus just a couple minutes out of Oakland. But we came to this meet ready to go, one-time swim, and we did it, finally. Yeah. Breaking an eight-year streak for our school, which is a really big deal. Yeah, um, a lot of it was for the seniors that weren't able to do the state meet last year. That was a big deal for them, and yeah, we won it for them. 
All right, everybody. Well, I'm in the studio with David Jolkevsky. We're going to start with Division One. Ann Arbor Pioneer came out on top. David, what were some of their strengths? I think the depth all the way around um, qualified quite a few kids. Um, relays were a strong suit for them. They scored three relays top eight, which is huge. Uh, and then, you know, Siegel with, with, you know, great performance in the 200, but then breaking that 100 breaststroke record uh, was just phenomenal. He, you know, picked up swimmer of the year for us. Uh, Going to be moving on to a D1 uh, college next year and competing. Uh, but yeah, I think all the way around, you know, Steph, we had her on the podcast earlier in the year, and you know, she talked about some of the great training things she was doing, but lots of depth, a lot of kids qualifying, picking up those little points when you need to. Uh, just great swims all the way around. Mm -hmm. So you touched on the fact that uh, the training has changed a little bit this year. Obviously, their season's been shortened. How do you think these coaches are going to build off of this in the future? Uh, it's it's going to be a lot of the off-season for us, going through all the analytics, looking at all the times and things like that. But you know, I think we heard some great stuff this year from coaches when we did have time on the deck, uh, you know, some of the conversations afterwards. But um, yeah, we saw a lot more power, a lot more strength, uh, a lot, of, lot more speed work. Kids getting fins out, we use bungee cords, there's even power towers and stuff like that. And I think we're going to start to see some of that shift away from big yardage and some of those long days in the pool to maybe some more stroke specific and race specific stuff. And uh, just lots of good speed and power, getting off those blocks fast, getting the turns really going. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a sprinting environment all the way around. And, and I, I think we saw that this year and I think we can back away from some of the yardage, but uh, time will tell. We'll see how we do here this summer. So. Moving right along into Division II, Seaholm dominated all year long. What were some of the attributes that led to their success? Well, you know, again, I, you see the girls win in the fall. I, I, you know, so there's a great swimming community going. Uh, kids are swimming in middle school all the way up. Um, and, and I think the contributions across the board didn't win any individual events except diving. Um, but relays are up there again, top four, you know, a bunch of times. Um, Cam wins diving this year uh, for them, Cam Lieberman set a bunch of pool records all over Oakland County. So grabbing those 20 points on Friday night was huge for them. Uh, and then, you know, if you go through those results, you know, a lot of kids second, third, and fourth place. Uh, Tommy Girdler uh, had, had some great swims for them, uh, you know, all the way around. But uh, yeah, again, you know, a team that just continues to rebuild because of the strength they have with their numbers. Kids that just are passionate about, you know, being out there and want to be part of that program. Um, but yeah, you know, a team that won Oakland County, won the OA this year, and uh, they're just going to reload boys and girls next year, so it's going to be exciting to see, uh, see home and see what they can do next year. Moving right along into Division Three, East Grand Rapids came out on top. This one was a little bit different, though. They won in the diving area. David, can you elaborate a little bit on that? Sure. You know, again, Friday night, you grab the diving points. Uh, and Butch Briggs, again, there's a team that just reloads year after year after year. Uh, he's one of the, you know, uh, coaches that's up for Coach of the Year for us this year. Uh, just gets the best out of every kid. And again, 20 points coming in on Saturday morning for the swimmers is certainly a good feel. Uh, didn't win any other individual events, but again, go, go look through the results. First through 16th, you didn't see a first, but you're gonna see a lot of kids in, in where some teams might just get one qualifier in an event, or sometimes two or three people across a whole meet. East Grand Rapids has multiple kids in every single race. So you didn't get the first place, but you're, you're building up those points with second, third place finishes, or even the ninth through 16th finishes help them build those points up. So uh, yeah, certainly some great results for Butch. I, I think some other uh, you know, big ones out of D3. We had four swimmers make the dream team this year, uh, which, is, which is pretty crazy. And, and a lot of coaches this year talked about how that top end speed was you know surpassed what we thought was going to happen with with everything. So uh, we saw some you know great results there, but you know the numbers dropped off a little bit. Times dropped off a little bit as you went through the meet, uh, as you got a little bit lower in the, in the races. But those four athletes gra grab those dream team finishes, where usually it's D1 or D2 that, that that's making that happen. But uh, I think you're starting to see the a little more of a level playing field uh, across the board with all three meets. Um, Cantrell gets the, the win in the 500 freeze, the only guy under 430 this year uh, in the whole state, which is outstanding. Um, earned the dream team finish and uh, put himself up there pretty high. I want to say like top 10 uh, all time in Michigan high school history in that 500 freestyle swim. So uh, yeah, I, I think you're seeing a lot more faster swimming coming out of D3. Uh, a lot of those smaller schools on the west side and uh, kids just put in the time year round and, and you're seeing some great results. And how was the state meet formatted differently this year opposed to previous years? Yeah, th so this one was crazy for us because uh, diving, you know, uh, usually takes place over the course of several hours on a Friday and then they roll into Saturday for the last few dives. This year they're all on a Friday, um, all 11 dives right away. We took a few extra breaks for them so they, they weren't rushed through things. Um, but to not have that, that day on, day off type setup was a little interesting for them. 
With the swimmers, uh, we're always used to a prelims on Fridays and a, and a championship finals on Saturday. So much like we're all seeing right now in March Madness, it's a one and done. You know, you don't have a chance to adjust. You don't have a chance to go back and, you know, maybe find a different order on your relay. So these kids had, they had one opportunity to make it work. Uh, new pools this year, normally we're at college pools. Um, and, you know, due to the COVID restrictions and stuff, the kids had to, uh, we, had, we had to ask uh, several of our high schools to, to step up, which they did, just phenomenal jobs. And we talked on a podcast a lot that a lot of these coaches weren't really planning on the swimmers swimming fast this year because of COVID and everything being shut down. How do you think COVID has impacted these athletes in a positive way? Uh, I mean, I, I think they value that opportunity. You know, we're, we're seeing it so much where it was taken away from us and now you have a chance. And, you know, you stepped up to the occasion and if we were shut down, okay, then we're, we're going to do what we can and we're going to, you know, embrace every moment we get. So every, every opportunity they had to swim and dive, uh, these kids stepped up to it. And, and I think they, they just valued it more and more and they knew that, you know, I mean, last year we, we were within 24 hours of state meeting and got yanked away from them. So when they were on the deck, it was like, this could be the last time. And, and they got up there, they raced out of their minds, they just dove fantastic. J just that urgency, that sense of urgency really just drove them and, and they just got after it. And it, it, yeah, just phenomenal, some great, great swims. All right, well, David, it's been a pleasure hosting Poolside Podcast with you this year and I look forward to next year. Thank you, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, MHSA, thank you, State Champs. Congratulations once again to all of our State Champs. Be sure to follow State Champs Michigan on social media. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and check out State Champs TV on YouTube. Download the free State Champs Network app to catch all the shows. You can even watch on Amazon Fire Stick and on Roku. I'm Sarah Davis. Thanks for watching. State Champs is presented by Lawrence Technological University. LTU offers over two dozen varsity sports for men and women, along with several dozen world-class undergraduate programs. Athletic and academic scholarships available in all sports. Visit ltuathletics.com and recruit yourself. The Michigan High School Athletic Association, promoting the value and values of educational athletics. Detroit Medical Center's physical therapy and sports medicine pros. Do you have a sports injury or are you just looking to take your game to the next level? Go where the pros go. Visit dmc.org slash game changers.